Jeez, Mike, don't you ever talk about anything besides Stephen King? Of course I do. Just not today. He supposed he should have known it would be Miss Massey, though, even before it finally happened. Because of all the undead things in the Overlook, she had been the worst. The rational part of his mind told him she was just a fragment of unremembered bad dream that had followed him out of sleep and across the hall to the bathroom. The Overlook wasn't done with him. At least one of its eventual spirits had followed him all the way to Florida. Once he had come upon that woman sprawled in the bathtub, she had gotten out and tried to choke him with her fishy fingers. If he opened the door now, she would surely finish the job. He compromised by putting his ear against the door. At first there was nothing, and then he heard a faint sound dead fingernails scratching on wood. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here, and today we are talking about the follow-up to the 1978 horror classic, The Shining. And we are talking, of course, about Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. This is a book I did not read when it came out. And people ask me, why? I mean, this is like the most anticipated sequel. King doesn't write big sequels like this. Why didn't you read this when it came out? Because the 1978 book to me is such a horror classic, just like in an iconic level, that I was afraid of it damaging the legacy. So I did not read it. I, I felt like at this point, King had kind of lost, I don't want to say he'd lost his mojo, but he had uh, he had kind of stopped trying to scare you. You know, he had gotten more into uh, deeper meanings and crime stuff, high drama. Not drama, I don't really know the world. Music. Just He had stopped trying to scare the pants off of us. He knew he wasn't going to be able to scare us like he did in the 80s and somewhat in the 90s. And I felt like he just kind of took a new direction. 11 63 having such success with that, when that was really just a time travel love story, which was wonderful, by the way, I think he realized, you know what, hey, I'm actually a good enough writer. I can do something besides just being that guy who tries to scare you all the time. So with Dr. Sleep, I was like, I felt like it was probably a little, too little too late. So I was like, look, I'm just going to not read it to try to uh, just maintain that whole legacy of the first Shining book. It might sound silly to some people, but that's just how I felt. So, uh, of course, I got it. I get all of his books. But I did, it just sat on my shelf for the last six years. Never had any plans to read it until I saw the trailer for the movie coming out. And if you guys have listened to any other thing where I've talked about horror on here, Mike Flanagan, the director is a horror director that I think is the best horror director working right now. Uh, I love Gerald's Game, obviously, another King adaptation, so I know he understands King. Uh, I loved uh, Oculus, was really, really cool, very underrated. Haunting Hill House was wonderful, just absolutely wonderful. I, I, think, I, I think he's a fantastic horror director, and I think he's just, he's a really good storyteller. So when you take someone who is my favorite storyteller ever, and you give a director who's good at telling those stories, Sounds like a match made in heaven, right? So I saw the trailer and I was like, holy shit, this looks really good. Okay, so it interested me enough to where I was like, look, I'm gonna do like I usually do. Most people like to watch the movie before they read the book. Not me, I always like to read the book before I see the movie. Uh, one, because the book is always going to be better. Uh, I like to do that and then go see the movie and see, hey, is this kind of how I imagine it in my mind's eye? Just see, you know, it's, it's something fun that I do. and. I was going to read this before it came out, and I actually actually skipped in line. I was going to read The Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks next, but I was like, you know what? I just finished First Law. I kind of need to let that marinate for a little bit. Let me get into some horror here. And I will say, first off, I think the movie has a chance to be better than this book, and I will explain why. Uh, these will be spoilers for the 1978 Shining novel and the 1980 Stanley Kubrick movie. I will not be doing spoilers for what's in Dr. Slate. What I am going to say is that anyone who knows the whole history about how King didn't like the adaptation that Stanley Kubrick did because uh, it changed his book so much, you have to understand. I feel like this story has gotten blown out of proportion over the years. Oh, King just hated that movie. Here's what actually happened. King was very young. He did not have that many books out yet. 
He had, this was like the third movie adaptation coming after Carrie in, I think it was, no, I it was after the Salem's Lot TV series. So it had two very faithful adaptations to his story. So yeah, this was his first experience in dealing with Hollywood, dealing with a director who's well known to get, that is difficult to get along with, to work with in Stanley Kubrick. And he just, he wasn't, he wouldn't know how to approach this. How uh, Stanley Kubrick just basically told him to get the fuck off a set. You know, he didn't know how to react to that. I can't say I blame him. So, uh, yeah, he was bitter about how things turned out. I think if you ask him today off the record, he'd say, look, it wasn't what I wrote, but it was a damn good movie. I'm sure he would say that now. But I, that's why I think now Stephen King says every adaptation of his is wonderful. He really liked it because he doesn't want that this pushback that has been following him for almost 40 fucking years now. You know, so. However, the when I started, they were going to make the story of Dr. Slee. They were going to make an adaptation of Dr. Slee. I say, okay, well. If this is Mike Flanagan, who is a very big King fan, he's not going to insult him by not adapting his book, not a sequel to the Stanley Kubrick movie. Then I saw the trailer and I said, holy crap, this is genius. They're doing both. And what I mean by genius is, look, there are a few tweaks that you can make in this story and you could make it. Sorry, it's not on the camera. You can make this book a sequel to the Stanley Kubrick movie with just a few tweaks. And I feel like that's what Mike Flanagan's gonna do. By putting, all right, here's where I said where you got the uh, you got the spoilers from 1978. In the movie, they escape, uh, uh, Jack Torrance stays behind, dies in the, uh, the the maze, which is not in the book. The, 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 the shrubbery maze is not in the book. Uh, but the hotel's still there. In the book, the hotel explodes with Jack in it. The boiler explodes. And so there is no Overlook Hotel anymore. Obviously, in uh, in this movie, there very much is going to be an Overlook Hotel. You see the... Uh, by the way, all those clips in the trailer, they are not archival footage. Mike Flanagan has said they have completely reshot all of those scenes. So when you see young Danny on the big wheel with the, the, the famous carpet, totally new. They really they reshot those scenes. So uh, that just goes to show that this guy knows what he's doing. He knows King. And making this, a, this an adaptation of this book and a sequel to the Kubrick movie... To me, I think that's a brilliant idea. Now, most people think, yeah, it's a common sense idea because you're going to get people who go there expecting a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining and then they just get a straight-up adaptation of Dr. Sleep, which ignores what happened in that. Uh, no, I feel like this is the best way that they could possibly do it. I feel like he's going to be very faithful to this book and he's going to be uh, very faithful to the Stanley Kubrick rules that were set up. Now, I know this is a book review and not a movie review, so I, I apologize for that. What this story entails is Danny has very much grown up to become his father. He is an alcoholic, can't hold a job. He, you know, he drinks a lot to suppress his shine. Uh, he, he does really bad things. I mean, it starts off with him basically uh, stealing money from a, a single mom with a, like a two-year-old uh, because he, after they get ripped on cocaine one night. So, I mean, he's not in a good place at all. And he's just kind of like a drifter. He's going from town to town, job to job. He's, he's, he's just a straight-up alcoholic trying to get away from uh, the shine, you know, because he, when he's younger, he still has to deal with the, the spooks from the, uh, from the Overlook followed him. You know, uh, uh, the woman in the tub is very prevalent in the first chapters of this book, and it's scary stuff. It, it really is right away. I'm like, oh, okay, this is the darkest king has wrote in years. Uh, I'm really digging it. But it quickly shifts to him, like I said, as a much older man. And it, this book goes through the years. It really does. It goes through about 15, maybe 20 years of him going through sobriety and trying to get clean. And after he goes through sobriety, he goes and he works in a hospice where he uses his shining ability to kind of help people that are on their deathbed, you know, cross the other side. That's why he gets the nickname Dr. Sleep. But the big thing is he has this connection to this young girl named Abra Stone who has the shine and is very powerful even more powerful than Danny was at that age so they start communicating and they find out that there is this group called the true knot which the best way I could put them is that they're like steampunk vampires um, Rose the Hat is one of the better villains that Kings wrote in a while I thought she is the leader and uh, she she wears like this old like ringmaster top hat and that's where I get like the whole steampunk thing but also they try to uh, get this thing that they call steam, which is basically, think of the dark crystal where they're still in the essence, you know, from the Geffling. It's, uh, it's, it's like that where they, they will capture someone with the, with the shining. They will torture the shit out of them 
because apparently that gets the power way more when they're in pain. And then they will suck like this life force out of them, the steam as they call it. And it's just, it's very dark. You know, they, 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 they torture this small child and do that. And Abra using the shining actually like sees his, his name in a newspaper and she, 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 she realizes what happened to him and knows that these people are looking for her because she has like a, a telepathic event with Rose. And it's just, it makes a lot of sense. It, it, I really, what I wasn't expecting was for them to go so far away from The Shining, uh, the book, basically where you just think about this haunted hotel and it actually focuses on the ability of The Shining itself. And I think that's a wonderful decision by King. If he had just tried to go back to another haunted place, it would have just felt like, hey, yeah, remember when I did The Shining and you guys really liked it? No, he definitely does something very, very different. Um, but, but like I said, with the final confrontation taking place uh, in the same area as the 1978 novel, I see how a couple of tweaks and they can change that for the movie. And if you've seen the trailer, you realize that is very, very much what they are doing. Uh, what I liked about this book is, of course, I liked getting more Danny. Uh, very, very small, but you got some, some more stuff with, uh, with Dick Halloran, which I always appreciated him and, and Danny's relationship. I always thought that was really underrated. Um, try not to do spoilers here. I guess that the whole link between Abra and, and Danny was okay. Really, to me, it was him trying to battle the demons of coming over, his, uh, getting over his uh, his alcohol abuse. Uh, I'm not an alcoholic. No one in my family has ever been an alcoholic, so I don't really know what that's like to go through that. I feel like King's best writing is when he talks, basically puts stuff that's happened in his life into his books. It's very well known that he put a lot of his, you know, uh, problems with substance abuse into his stories and stuff like that. And you can tell that maybe this is something that he's went through because, you know, he's been sober since the 80s now. So uh, I'm sure there was a little bit of projection there as he was hitting his 25 years sober. Makes a lot of sense. It really, really does. So I like that, I think, a little more. Obviously, I'm always going to like the whole character study part of King books more than the jumps and the scares and the ghouls and the beasts. But I thought that it was really, really good villain that he was, he's was he been lacking in a lot of his books lately. Even his really, really, really good books, like 11 I thought that the, the villain was just, eh, whatever. Uh, the new book I did with the Institute, I thought that it was fine. I just thought that the villain was lacking. Uh, Mr. Mercedes might be the last time I thought he had a really great villain. And I'm talking about that. That was in book two in Finders Keepers, not even Mr. Mercedes. Uh, video for that for another time. Um, but yeah, I, I like the book for the most part. I will say it does really drag kind of in the in between the second and third acts, transitioning to that final, final part. And the final confrontation's kind of meh, really. It wasn't as climactic as I wanted it to be. Uh, There's a big tie-in to the 1978 book that, I don't know, I felt like it should have landed better with me than it did. It just didn't do anything for me. I felt like it was kind of predictable. But uh, I did like Danny. Uh, I did like... Uh, Jimmy, the guy that was with them. I, I did like their relationship. And uh, I mean, for the most part, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good book. It's a good read, I think. But if you're just wanting a straight up horror story again, you're not getting it with this. It's definitely not like the first Shining book at all. And uh, how I always rank King books is, uh, is it something that I'll ever read again? No, it's not one that I'll read again. I will read The Shining definitely again. I've already read it twice in my life and I'm sure I'll read it again. Uh, I will read The Shining again. I don't think I'll ever read this one again. And again, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad book. How I rank King books are, would I read it again or not? You know, and uh, Institute had Don't Read Again, but I said I definitely recommend it. If you like the 1978 book, not just the Stanley Kubrick movie, because look, guys, if you just saw the Stanley Kubrick movie and you try to read this, you're going to be like, what is going on? It's not the same thing. If you want to read this, you need to read The Shining novel first. It'll make a lot more sense. Whereas it looks like the movie, all you can see is the Kubrick movie and you'll be fine. Uh, but that's why I said I feel like the movie has a chance to be better because it does look like it's still a horror story. Whereas this very much was not. Yes, the true knot was very scary. The idea of you know your, your kid having special abilities and trying to deal with that and then knowing that some kind of vampire is coming to get them, you know, obviously very, very terrifying. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that, that's about all I got, non-spoiler-wise. Uh, I might do a quick spoiler review. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to ease back on the spoiler reviews unless it's, a, you know, like a series uh, thing like that because 
uh, a lot of people in the feedback I've got. I said on this channel that I'm starting to do feedback where I listen to your feedback. And if you tell me that you guys want to hear spoilers, sure, I'll do it. But most people have said, I want you to sell me on the book. So again, I'm listening to feedback. If I feel like there's stuff that I just have to get out, just have to talk about, I'll do a separate spoiler video. Uh, maybe I'll do that uh, spoiler video when I do my, my, my movie review for Doctor Sleep. But